Hello friends, today we will see about the satellite communication subsystems. In the previous video, video already we had seen about the some subsystem that is the AOC and TTCM. In the this video we will see about the next two subsystems. In the space segment subsystem, attitude and orbit control subsystem. Second one is the TTCM that is telemetry tracking command and monitoring subsystems. These two subsystems we had seen in the previous video. Now, in this video, we will see power and antenna subsystems and the transponders. Power systems. Now, for the satellite functioning, it requires the power. In the satellite, it requires the internal power in order to operate various electronic systems and communication payload that are present in it. Power system provides the power required for working of a satellite, mainly the solar cells or panels and rechargeable batteries are used in these systems. Solar cells. This produces the electrical power which is generally in the form of current from the incident sunlight. Therefore, solar cells are used primarily in order to provide power to other subsystems of the satellite. We know that individual solar cells generate very less power. So, in order to generate more power, group of cells that are present in an array form can be used. There are two types of solar arrays, circular solar, cylindrical solar array and the rectangular solar arrays or it is called solar cell. Cylindrical solar arrays are used in spinning satellites. Only part of the cylindrical array will be covered under sunshine at any given time. Due to this, electrical power gets generated from the partial solar ray only. This is the drawback of this type. The drawback of this solar cylindrical solar array is overcome with solar cell that is rectangular solar array. This one produces the more power because of solar cells of solar cell are exposed to sunlight. Next one is the rechargeable batteries. During the eclipses time, it is difficult to get the power from the sunlight. So satellite does not get the power in the eclipse time from the sunlight. In this Situation subsystem get the power from the rechargeable batteries. These batteries produce power to other subsystems during launching of satellite also. In general, these batteries charge due to excess current which is generated by solar cells in the presence of sunlight. Next subsystem is the antenna subsystems. The antennas are present both at the satellite and the earth station. Satellite antennas perform two types of the function. One is the receiving of signals which are coming from the earth station and transmitting of the signals to one or more earth station based on the requirement. In other words, satellite antennas receive uplink signal from the earth station and they transmit downlink signals to the earth station. We know that the length of the satellite antennas is inversely proportional to the operating frequency. The operating frequency has to be increased in order to reduce the length of satellite antennas. Therefore, satellite antennas are operated in the range of gigahertz frequencies. There are mainly four types of satellite antennas. First one is wire antenna, second horn antennas, third array antennas and fourth one is the reflector antennas. Now wire antennas. This is the wire antennas and this is the pattern of wire antennas. Monopole and dipole antennas are come under this category. These are used at very high frequencies in the range of VHF and UHF to provide the communication for TTCM subsystem. The length of total wire which is being used as a dipole if equals the half of the wavelength that is L equal to lambda by 2 then such antenna is called as half wave dipole antenna. Wire antennas are suitable for covering its range of access and to provide signal strength in all directions. So these antennas are also called as the omnidirectional antenna. This is the pattern of omnidirectional antenna. Second one is the horn antenna. As it is looking like a horn, it is the horn antenna. The antenna which with an aperture at the end can be termed as aperture antenna. The edge of a transmission line when terminated with an opening then it radiates the energy. This opening which is an aperture makes it is an aperture antenna. 
Horn antenna is an example of this aperture antenna. It is used in satellites to provide the cover to cover the more area on the earth. Horn antennas are used in microwave frequency range. The same fair horn can be used for both transmitting and receiving the signals. A device named as a duplexer which separate these two signals. Next third one is the array antennas. These array antennas are used in satellites to create multiple beams from a single aperture. Multiple beams are formed by combining the radiation from several small elements made up of dipoles and horns. Last one is the reflector antenna. In the reflector antenna, generally it is a parabolic type. For satellite systems which are operating about 10 gigahertz, parabolic reflector antenna is mostly used. These are usually illuminated by one or more horns and provide a large aperture compared to the horn antenna. Parabolic reflectors offer much higher gain than that is achievable by the horn antenna alone. So in this figure we see that this is the reflector which is parabolic type. This is the feed point of the antenna and this is the vertex. And this antenna provides very high gain compared to the other antenna. Now last subsystem is the transponders. Transponders are nothing but the systems which provides the connecting link between transmitting and receiving antennas of the satellite. The transponder performs the function of both transmitter and receiver, that is responder in a satellite. So the word transponder is coming from the two words. One is the from transmitter, that is trans, and from the responder, it is ponder. So it is a transponder. Transponder performs mainly two functions, that is amplifying the receive input signal and translates the frequency of this signal. So in general, different frequency values are chosen for both uplink and downlink in order to avoid the interference between transmitted and received signal. So this is a general block diagram of the transponder. It is having satellite antennas, duplexer, low noise amplifier that is LNA, carrier processor and power amplifiers. The duplexer is a two-way microwave gate. It receives the uplink signal from the satellite antenna and transmits the downlink signal to the satellite antenna. Then low noise amplifier it amplifies the weak received signal. After that, carrier processor is there which performs the frequency down conversion of the received signal that is uplink signal and it determines the type of transponder. Last one is the power amplifier. It amplifies the power of frequency down converted signal that is downlink to the required level. Now different types of transponders. Basically two types of transponders are there. First one is the bent type transponder and second one is the regenerative transponder. Bent type transponders, they receives the microwave frequency signal. It converts the frequency of input signal to RF frequency and then amplifies it. It is also called as repeater and conventional transponder. It is suitable for both analog and digital signals. Next second type is regenerative transponders. It performs the function of bent type tra transponder that is frequency translation and amplification. But in addition to these two functions, these transponders also perform the demodulation of RF carrier to the baseband and regeneration of signals and modulation. It is also called as the processing transponder and it is suitable for only digital signals. So main advantage of regenerative transponder is Improvement in signal to noise ratio and have more flexibility in implementation compared to the bent type transponder. Now, there are also two types. One is the single conversion bent type transponder, which is of 6 by 4 gigahertz, means 6 gigahertz frequency is converted down, converted to the 4 gigahertz frequency. So, this is the block diagram of the single conversion bent type transponder. Here, input frequency is 6 gigahertz, it is given to the low noise amplifier. Then this filters the noise and given that signal to the down converter. To the down converter, it is having low, local oscillator of frequency 2.225 GHz. Then it gives the signal which is of 4 GHz, that is intermediate frequency signal. It is given to the bandpass filter. Then this RF signal is given to the preamplifiers, RF preamplifiers. These preamplifiers are generally either gallium arsenide, FET amplifier or PWT that is traveling wave tube amplifier. 
then that amplified signal is again given to that state that is high power amplifier this produces the amplified signal with the high power and then that is given to the antenna of 4 gigahertz so this 6 gigahertz is down converted to the 4 gigahertz which is of single conversion type pen type transponder and second one is the double conversion pen type transponder which is of 14 by 11 gigahertz frequency so the block diagram for this double conversion pen type transponder is here and here two conversion processes of the frequencies are happen so the double conversion now the input signal of 14 gigahertz is given to low noise amplifier that amplified signal of the filtering of noise given to the down converter here it is having the local oscillator of frequency 13 gigahertz so it produces the if signal of 1 gigahertz that is given to bandpass filter this 1 gigahertz signal is again given to the if amplifier so this amplified signal is now given to the up converter and to this up converter it is having the local oscillator of frequency 10 gigahertz so this up converter now gives the output of 11 gigahertz IF frequency. This 11 gigahertz is given to this bandpass filter and then that is given to the high power amplifier. So this amplifier signal then given to the antenna. So in this case 14 gigahertz is down converted to the 11 gigahertz and as there is two times conversion occurs so it is a double conversion band type transponder. So this single conversion and Double converger band type transponders are mostly used in the satellite communication. So till now we have seen different subsystems. Thank you.